Woods Ranger Melissa. How is everyone? Did Glacier Science Day. We have a special science video for you today. We have two special people that we're going to talk with and I'm very excited because I am standing here in Glacier National Park's native plant nursery. You can see all these beautiful plants surrounding me. So today I'm here with Rebecca Lawrence who is one of the uh, program managers for the Native Plant Restoration Program in Glacier National Park and I'm here with Levi Bisa who is uh, the nursery manager here for this Native Plant Nursery. So be, uh, before we talk to Levi we're going to start with Rebecca and she's going to tell us a little bit about the plants and what she does. Rebecca walks in to talk to the camera. Her explanation is interspersed with shots of potted plants and beds of plants growing in well-organized sections around the nursery grounds. Hi everybody, uh, I'm excited to be here and have you see the native plant nursery here in Glacier. So I'm going to talk a little bit about what a native plant is and why we are growing all of these native plants. A native plant comes from the area that it's native to. All of these plants that you see behind me come from Glacier National Park. Uh, we go out and we collect the seed in Glacier and grow it here in the park. So the reason we do this is, as part of the National Park's mission, we need to uh, conserve our natural resources. So we do that by growing the native plants, and then we are restoring areas of the park that have been disturbed by human impacts, so construction or high visitor use areas. So why are native plants important? They are... Um, they prevent erosion, soil erosion, and are the bottom of the food chain, so they provide food for animals and people as well. So what we try to do in Glacier is preserve the genetic integrity of our native plants by collecting from lots of different species and from all over the park, and those plants will go back to those specific areas where they came from in the park. This native plant nursery and our pole restoration program has existed since 1987. It started with funding from Federal Highways, which was restoring the Going to the Sun Road. And since then, we've expanded greatly. Uh, we started off growing about 30 different species of plants, and now we know how to grow about 250. Uh, we grow about 15,000 plants every year. And as I said before, we plant in areas that have been disturbed by human activity. So the going to the Sun Road, any kind of construction in the park for buildings, um, campgrounds where visitors use, um, create social trails and things like that. So those are the types of areas that we restore. Um, with our nursery crew and our revegetation crews. Melissa stands next to a cart holding several small potted plants and several pans full of different types of seeds. All right, now we're going to be joined by Levi, the native plant nursery manager for Glacier, and he's going to show us uh, some pretty cool things that are right here in front of me, plants and seeds. And so I'll let Levi tell us what we're looking at. Levi. Hello, and thanks for having me. Uh, today we have some seeds and some plants set out. Levi picks up a pan filled with tiny pink seeds and then picks up a small potted plant with broad green leaves. So right here we have thimbleberry seed, which is a wonderful tasting berry, and this is the plant that came from it. Levi points out a pan filled with small, multicolored round seeds. These are lupin seed, which is a wonderful little forb, purple. Uh, I love the seeds because they look like river rocks to me. Another pan holds bean-sized seeds of a rusty brown color. This is a white bark pine seed, which we actually have to climb the trees to collect the seed. Uh, here we have a bergamot, which is in the mint family. Levi picks up a small potted plant with tall stems, small leaves, and a purple bloom. He then gestures to a potted plant with a very long, thin stem and round green leaves. This is an aspen tree, which grows uh, pretty well in the east side of the park and in the North Fork area, it's pretty prolific. Levi shows a potted plant with small bushy green leaves and a white cluster-like flower. Uh, right here is a spirea plant which grows all over the park. This one is from St. Mary, so it will get planted back in St. Mary. And then here we have one of my favorite. This is a huckleberry. Uh, the scientific name is Vaccinium membranaceum. Huckleberry is a big food source for bears and birds and other wildlife here in the park. 
small shrubby potted plant with small oval shaped green leaves, some of which are red tinted. And people too. And people too, yes, lots of people eat them. Melissa and Levi stand on either side of a raised beds with small plants growing in it. So Levi, you showed us these um, thimbleberry seeds and you said that a lot of the plants that you grow, you uh, collect the seed and then you plant, you pot them and then you grow the plants. But I'm looking at this and I'm just kind of curious, is, were these from seed or how did these get here? So actually these are our cuttings beds. And so approximately 70% of our plants are grown from seed. And then the other 30% are grown from vegetative propagation. So we go out and we actually take cuttings off of the plants, little branches uh -huh. or these would be early shoots that have come up this year. Uh, come back and we process them and then we use a rooting hormone and then they stick, they get stuck in this bed and approximately six to eight weeks later we have roots on the bottom of them. No way. And so what are these ones? These are juniper from the Lake McDonald area. Uh, they'll take a little longer than say the cornice would. Um, they really like to grow roots. These ones are harder, but we've, we've gotten it down pretty well. And is this, what is this, what's this material right here? This is perlite. So it helps to keep the sand a little lighter. This is about a 50-50 sand perlite mix. Melissa reaches down into the soil perlite mix and picks up one of the small round white pieces of perlite to show to the camera. Oh, cool. And it allows, the sand allows for better drainage and the perlite allows it so it doesn't just get compacted too much. Oh. So, but you said most of the plants you grow from seed. So this is just how much? What About 30%. 30%, okay. Melissa kneels down and pulls a cone-shaped container out of a crate on the ground next to Rebecca. What is this, Rebecca? So this right here is a little baby rose plant that we started uh, this past winter. So most of the plants that you see around here were actually seeded in the fall and then they sit out here all winter and the snow falls on them and does its thing with the seeds and then they germinate in the spring. But some species you need to a little more work to get them to sprout. And so we pretend like we're mimicking winter and we will put our seeds in the refrigerator for a certain period of time and then we sow them in a greenhouse and then we get them to grow. So here we have a little baby rose plant. Rebecca extends a cone-shaped plastic container with a small green seedling sprouting from it. And here we have a little baby grass. She holds out another cone-shaped container sprouting tiny blades of grass. And both of these have, would have a brown tag on them which comes from Waterton Lakes National Park. So we have an agreement with their program to the north uh, and we grow plants for them that they we they send us the seed and then we grow the plants for them and then they come and pick them up and plant them in their restoration areas wow that is so great that's why we're the international peace park right yes exactly so this bed gets full sun and since the plants are lower the irrigation is a lower um, system and then behind the shade house is the most shaded areas for the plants that grow in avalanche that are very shade tolerant. Um, and then the rest of the nursery is pretty much everything in between, mostly sun um, with a little bit of shade sometimes throughout the day. Camera pans across nursery showing areas of various sunlight exposure. This has been so wonderful learning about the native plant nursery and glacier. I am so thrilled to be here today and I have learned a ton. I guess one of the things though I've heard a lot about and that you've talked about today is just that native plants have a lot of threats. Is that the, tr is that the case? Yes, it is. Actually the number one threat to our native plant communities in glacier are from invasive plant species. So um, we do try to combat that um, with a whole crew that, that is um, eradicating those weeds. Um, and um, so then we try to come back in with, with native plants um, after those have been treated. So Rebecca, you've been talking about some of these threats and invasive species and all the things that native plants have to face. What can we do from from home? What can we do to help native plants where we live or from our from our own backyards? That's a great question, Melissa. Uh, so 
everybody, uh, you can choose to plant native plants in your own gardens. Um, you can oftentimes local nurseries do carry them and uh, you can find out more information from your local county extension agent or if there's a native plant society in your area or your state you can contact them to find out what would be appropriate to grow in your backyard. Awesome! Thank you so much Rebecca and Levi for joining us for Glacier Science Day. It's been a wonderful day learning all about the plant nursery here in Glacier. And I am just curious, I think Levi, you showed me these seeds earlier, which are pretty tiny up from that angle, but it seems like maybe they're coming from this, or maybe they produce this tree, is that right? A small pine tree with a twisted trunk and branches and long green needles grows in the middle of a small ornamentally designed garden. Yes, absolutely. This is a white bark pine that we have growing here that started from seed. And uh, this is our demonstration garden. Uh, these grow up at um, tree line. So you would see these plants growing at Logan Pass on the Continental Divide. Um, and yeah, these white barks are really special yeah. trees. They're also under threat from a non-native invasive fungus. So that's why we're working to restore them as well. Thank you for joining us for Glacier Science Day. Thank you to Rebecca. Thank you to Levi. It was a treat to learn about the native plant nursery here in Glacier National Park. And stay tuned because we'll be having uh, more science videos this summer and fall with some of our researchers and managers in the park. And we'll hear more about what they do and learn a whole bunch. So thanks again. Have a wonderful Friday. Happy Glacier Science Day. Thank you. Thank you.